The first time I met uh, Professor Mudimbe, it was in 2000. Uh, it was a cocktail party organized by uh, Jane Gaines, who was teaching at that time at Duke University. She was trying to get me to meet some of the people at Duke uh, while I was at UNC Chapel Hill. And then later on, I came back to Duke in 2004, um, teaching there, and my office happened to be just underneath Mudimbe's office. And um, his assistant came to me, a black woman said, you should really take advantage of this man. So you here, really go up there and talk to him. And what I did. And uh, what happened is that next day he invited me for dinner uh, in his house. And uh, I was really impressed by that house. Um, um, it wasn't just a house, it was also uh, like the space uh, a smart person, uh, the space of uh, like somebody who's in the process of thinking, uh, reflecting, of learning, studying. Uh, so uh, I remember that he took a bottle of wine, uh, showed me a seat, and he said, uh, this is my chapel, but we'll have a glass of wine here. Obviously, it was clear that even if he had a very clear sense of conventions, he was also like into breaking them. And uh, uh, then later on, I met him many times. Every time I would go to North Carolina, um, I would go visit him, say yes, hello. Yes, that question always comes. Why is the film four hours? Um, I think uh, I had a lot of thoughts about the duration of that film. And I say four hours uh, is really what, for me, uh, allow people to get a real grasp on not just Mudimbe uh, as a person, as a character, but also his knowledge. Uh, so I said four hours is like you go to, to school at eight and you have a break at 12. So, uh, Obviously, you know, we have all these standards for television, for, uh, for movie theaters, but I think um, filming knowledge is not something easy. It was not just about telling people about Mudimbe, this man from Congo, teaching in America and who speaks almost 30 languages. It was mainly to also get people to get a grasp on really what he's teaching, what his knowledge is about. So it's a specific rhythm, you know, and also uh, going from kind of autobiography and to uh, his theories and also his space, uh, his experiences and his questions and him review other books. I just felt, you know, why would it be shorter? And the pace of the film itself is given by him. By him. So I couldn't like, speed it up or cut it too much because when you cut somebody so knowledgeable making a film like this you end up uh, obviously uh, distorting his discourse uh, and this is a scholar um, uh, and another thing is that I didn't want to intervene too much um, I really have a problem uh, with some of this film where the filmmaker in front of uh, let's say a very knowledgeable person is trying to force his way in by either intervening too much or so it's also our role to know when to step back and how to give space uh, so the fame is like this book you know, that's why I had the drawing of the book and then we, we go from uh, one chapter to another um, uh, even if it's just talking head uh, not just talking ahead because we, we are moving the house. The film is all happening in the house. But I think uh, it's so well uh, uh, broke, bre broken down and also have a lot of, has a lot of rhythm you know, based on the different conversation we have in the film. Uh, so far, people don't feel bored. Uh, people just ask for a break, maybe to go to the toilet to have a coffee. Uh, but so far, we're able to we have a very good response mainly at Berlinale and also the discussion was very, very long after.
After four hours, people were there for one hour and a half for the discussion. The opportunity of this film came uh, another time I visited him and he um, told me, I don't know what I'm going to do with all these books. I will be retiring soon. And I jumped on that occasion and I said, please don't go without me filming this house. And uh, the next thing I asked him, when are you there? And he said, uh, I'll be there in September. And I bought a ticket without telling him. I just called say, I have a ticket. I'm coming in September. Obviously, he was okay with it. So he, uh, when I arrived, I was supposed to stay at his house. But um, because he has a room for students coming to use his library. Mm, but he, he had rented a hotel room for me. And also, he gave me one of his cars. Um, he gave me three cars, all named after Benedictine uh, saint, I think, uh, Saint Scholastica, Saint uh, uh, Maur, and Saint Benoit. Uh, so he gave me the Saint Benoit car and saying, be careful when you're driving because I'm a sheriff. Uh, yes, Modimbe is a honorary sheriff of the city of Durham uh, because I think he told me he's been giving uh, uh, lessons to prisoners. Uh, so I could do that every day, leaving the hotel around 8.30 and then getting there at 9 and we would like just do whatever until 9 uh, or 8 at night. Uh, so it was like it's almost like for 10 days, you know, I'll just be going you know, to his house. And what happened also is that he was very, um, how can I put it? Um, I don't know if he was really prepared or not, or if he was planning to say what he would say, but uh, um, sometimes he'll be in one room, I'll be in one room for, for an hour, and then I'll just come in with the camera, uh, ask him a question, and then he would tell me what he's doing. Some other time he will be already sitting on the spot when I arrive, and from that, you know, we will do the whole day from that spot. So it was very interesting to interact with him. Um, uh, for me, it was uh, to really give space and room to his word and to his life and to his knowledge uh, because I believe in the identification. You know, by seeing an African life, you know, living like this, and I think it could have been an inspiration for a lot of Africans, intellectual, young people. Uh, and also to uh, to have a model. Yes, I did learn a lot. You know, I um, I learned first from a man who left Africa, who embraced Western knowledge uh, almost against his will, and who was able to find himself through all this um, and, and to actually uh, be better than anyone else at what he's doing. Um, I also learned uh, that whole culture of uh, really seeking knowledge, living for knowledge. Um, uh, obviously, having somebody like that in front of you make you question yourself a lot. Um, uh, one of the things I really like in uh, uh, all the material I had to edit uh, is when he's almost explaining how you can solve any problem uh, using his method actually and by asking the question, like, oh, what is the question? And um, this is few things, few tools actually we need uh, on a daily basis and we don't always know where to start. Um, uh, I would say also, obviously I learned a lot about history and about uh, the origin of things. Uh, when he says Africa is an invention, it's a feeling that uh, we we could be sick, but without knowing what we're suffering from, or what disease we have. Um, and it was very good to, to, to have a clarification, uh, because um, 
when Dimit talks about the invention, Africa being an invention, uh, he's also into a possible, the idea of a possible reinvention. Uh, and how could we design the reinvention if uh, we don't even know that we were invented? And uh, from that invention, I think uh, uh, we can really easily move to the reinvention. And that was something that was very clear to me after that film. Mm.